Hey, hey, everybody. I'm Sean. I'm Steph. And you're watching Rampant Live tonight. I am super, super stoked. One of my favorite people on the planet, one of the nicest people you'll ever meet, and one of the hardest working people in our industry. He is a visual media producer at Magic Filmworks. He's a digital specialist, a live stream engineer, and guru. He's taught us a ton about live streaming. He's a video engineer. He's also a U.S. Navy veteran, and he runs the DDC, the District Digital Creative User Group in D.C. I don't know when this guy has time to sleep or eat. I'd like to welcome everybody. Welcome George E. Kennedy Jr. How are you doing, George? Hey, hey, what's going on, creators? Sean, Steph, what's going uh, on? It's such an honor to have you on the show. And I'm going to start off right now with saying thank you so much for serving our country. That's really amazing of you. Um, it, it's probably the reason why you're so militant in your work ethic. Uh, so thank you. And uh, it's just awesome to have you on the show, man. I just... Uh, we're huge fans of you. You've always been really kind to us. And uh, every time at NAB, we'll find you somewhere, you know, just walk up to us and, you know, you give us a big hug and you're just like one of the nicest people we've ever met. So thank yes. you for, for yes, being on the thank show. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for having me. So um, if, if anyone out there who doesn't know you, which I'd find really hard to believe because you're everywhere, uh, but if someone out there doesn't know you, why don't you go ahead and just uh, explain who you are and what you do real quick and we'll jump into this. I'm uh, George E. Kennedy Jr. For those of you that know me or don't know me, it's at gkjr.com. Um, I am a Navy veteran, like Sean said, um, graduate of the University of D.C. in Washington, D.C. Um, I run uh, District Digital Creatives, and I also have a small business called Magic Filmworks, and that's M-A-G-E-K, Filmworks. And uh, you all, you happen to work in one of the toughest uh, regions, I think, in the country. Yes. Um, D.C. happens to be a little bit of everything. Uh, you know, most regions in the country have a very specific kind of work. D.C. is blessed with all kinds of work. Why don't you tell us what kind of work that you see in, in that area? Well, I not only work in the production in industry, I also work in the audiovisual industry. So pretty much I get to juggle between two, uh, two different uh, industries in the Washington, D.C. area and beyond the D.C. area. I mean, like you said, D.C. is a, is a tough market. I mean, right now we go into a political season, so it's a lot of folks that are busy. And then there's a lot of folks that are having some downtime right now. So, you know, I'm a little bit fortunate to be able to juggle two different markets and, you know, kind of survive in both of them. Yeah, I mean, you see uh, national TV shows being shot and edited uh, in D.C., a lot, lot of editing going on. You've got, what, like Nat Geo's out there, a lot of big companies out there, commercials out there. Obviously, the political uh, thing is huge out there. I mean, come on. And, uh, and then, of course, you've got regional and corporate work, lots of uh, corporate work. Um, uh, what we, when we went and visited the DDC, it was jam-packed with people doing all kinds of different kinds of work. So uh, it's interesting how vibrant the, the, the market is there, but also yeah. how really competitive it is because every single person in that room is essentially doing the same job. I mean, that's correct. You know, right now, you know, like you said, we have a vast government business, uh, corporate, NGOs. So and now we, we have a pretty... We always had a film, uh, film community, but that's even growing right now in the D.C. area. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on in D.C., uh, regentrification. So we have a lot, of, a lot more hipsters, I like to call them. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's cool. So, you know, I'm really enjoying D.C. at, at, at this time. But again, it's still a tough market. And, you know, you really got to stay on top of your game to keep things moving. Yeah, so let's talk about that a little bit. We're going to jump around. We're not, you know, we're pretty casual on the show. Uh, you say keep things moving, and you and I have talked a lot offline, but, um, you know, I, I subscribe to the Bruce Lee method of constantly being liquid and, and moving. And you, my friend, are at the forefront of a technology that a lot of people still don't realize is a trend and, or they're not taking it seriously. But live streaming is the future. That's undeniable. Uh, and you're way, way, way ahead of everybody. Uh, why don't you talk uh, to us a little bit about how you got into that and, and how you developed uh, your skills in it? Because really, there's not a lot of training out there. Well, like I said, I'm a video engineer. So, you know, I've been following it for a while. The live streaming, streaming thing is really growing right now. So as a video engineer, I already know about switching. I already know about routing and integration. So, you know, for me... The first step was uh, really playing with you. I mean, YouTube has been streaming for a little while now. So YouTube was really my first exposure. You know, so I jumped in on that bandwagon. And, you know, um, once the st streaming started getting, got going, I got in with Wowza, who's a streaming media company, you know, and I've been using their products for a little while now. So I've been trying to harness it. The audiovisual industry is, we do a lot of association work. Like you, you've seen a DNC right now. So that's being live streamed at the same time. So we... I'm going in with my pack and actually integrating with our already set up switch system. So it's easy for me to sell that product to my clients. I, I was like, why not? It's just a, not a source of income for me. So, And 
our industry right now, I almost feel that as creatives, we kind of have to move in that direction or at least expose ourselves to it because we need to be able to create media for that kind of environment also. So that's going to be over the set top box, which is your Apple TV, your Roku. So we're going to be able to, we're going to need to create content for that. So you kind of have to know what you're doing in that realm to really kind of mix and mingle with it. Oh, I, I agree. And the one thing I love about this particular field is that it integrates already really well with the software and the hardware that uh, most of us already know. There's some specialty hardware, like we use, uh, per, your, uh, per your suggestion, we use Wirecast, but you know, we use a Blackmagic camera, we use Adobe yep. Creative Suite to do uh, our titles and stuff. So there's still a lot of similar software. So for someone who wants to get into this, it's not all that scary, but it certainly helps if you have a, vin a video engineering background and understand switching, because essentially it's, it's switching just in a virtual manner. Right. I mean, the last meeting we just had uh, with, with, for DDC, uh, we had Marco from One River Media out in San Francisco, and we had the Black, um, uh, Jason from Black Magic Design. And what I, what I told the audience is, you already, I mean, there's a lot of folks kind of snubbed their nose of Black Magic gear. I've been using their gear for a while. What I, what I said to folks in that audience is, a lot of you here are already, already using DaVinci Resolve. Mm -hmm. Do you know that there is a copy of DaVinci Resolve inside of the ATM switcher? So... For a freelancer, not necessarily a full-time editor, a full-time editor or a full-time colorist, but for a freelancer that's looking to really gain more income, you're already a colorist. Within um, the ATM switcher, there's DaVinci Resolve. There's companies that are going to be looking for folks that know to shade cameras or at least know DaVinci Resolve because that's how you're shading your cameras. I know you, you're using a micro um, studio camera right now. Yeah. If you put that into a switcher, you have full con control of the sensor and be able to color or whatever the case may be. So there's a lot of opportunities out there right now in the streaming realm for creatives. So, you know, if you're looking as a freelancer, again, not necessarily someone that's, that's a full-time colorist, but as a freelancer, if you're looking to expand your income, there's so many different avenues right now in our industry to go. Oh, I agree. And I, I love the Blackmagic software. I've, we've got Resolve. I've got the Micro Studio camera. Yep. We've got the HDMI to Thunderbolt uh, that's capturing all of this. You know, so I'm, I love Blackmagic. And like I said, if you, you I, I think if you're a gearhead, you will really have a good time. If you like to rig, if you're a gearhead, you'll have no issues getting into streaming. You just got to kind of take the time. Don't just jump in. Just You got to take the time and really kind of at least think about what you're doing and kind of trying to harness a little bit of it so you won't get caught out there, you know, hanging. Yeah, um, it's not as easy uh, no, as not. we thought it was going to be. But thank you know you answered the phone yes. on the weekend, so I, you should send me an invoice for that. that that's crazy because that's I'm that's a, taking into family time right there. I'm not sending you an invoice, man. <laughs> this <laughs> this is what the industry is about. You know, we have to be able to help each other when need be. You know, I, I know that you don't necessarily work in my realm of, realm of work. You're trying to do something completely different for rampants, and I I love what you guys are doing. So it's my pleasure to help you guys because you're helping the industry with a product that you're putting out on the market. So, you know, it's a win-win situation. And that's why, how a lot of us have to look at it. Instead of trying to tear, you know, each other apart and try to steal from each other, it's just best if we try to help each other. Because we, not all of us, I mean, I would love to be a full-time editor, but it's not in my calling right now. I edit because I have to edit because I shoot. I have that, that client base. And then I have my audiovisual client. So I'm never going to be a full-time editor. So I don't call myself one. So... That's how I feel about the whole... That's why I call myself a visual media producer because my producer of visuals, whether it's PowerPoint presentations, whether it's a live stream, whether I'm just behind the switcher for that one day. So, you know, that's the way I feel about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what's great is you've carved yourself a niche that you've made yourself very useful to your clients. Yep. You know, and by doing that, you're also handling all kinds of gear. I mean, just right on your page, I see the big old Ursa right there. That thing is a beast. You know, and, and I see, you know, you're constantly using all kinds of different gear and switching. And so you make yourself valuable by knowing all this this gear and uh, being able to to help your clients facilitate their live needs, which not a lot of people can do. And I think for someone in this field, um, it's so similar that if you're looking to increase your um, your income or try to find something else to, to do in this industry, live streaming is huge. And I, I, I just I'm shocked that so many people kind of. Uh, put their nose up at it. It's it's the future. It's you know everyone has a we for the lack of a better term we've got a TV studio here in our house. You know, it it, it everybody's doing it. So I mean they have celebrities right now putting uh, advertisements out looking for professionals like you to become their live streaming person. Man, I could tell you that 
the reason I, I recommend Wirecast, and that's that's not because they're for the user group that I run, they're a supporter of it, but I don't do anything with the user group that is not going to benefit, that I don't think is going to benefit the user base. And a lot of things that I do with the user group is things I'm already doing. I mean, we're going to be streaming some live, just like you're doing here, we're going to be doing some streaming soon. So, you know, I'm able to, what I know I'm able to extend into the user group right now. Um, the gear, I mean, the Black Magic, the Ursa is a monster, but I'm able to use that camera for live streaming. I'm able to go out and shoot with it. Um, we were just in New York for the um, Black Magic Day, and that's that was really a good piece to see how many folks are trying to investigate what you, you know these cameras. It's not going to be a, a win all for everyone, but for a guy like me that don't have fifty thousand dollar bottom line, yep. you know, I don't, I can't go out and buy a camera that's you know whether it's red, whether it's a Panasonic, whatever the case may be. I have to use what I know is going to be able to make a quick turnaround, whether it's going to pay for itself quickly. Um, Black Magic Gear is a win win. I always say to folks, and my good friend Marco out in San Francisco would say the same thing too. If you're willing to take some time and work with, these, with this gear, work with these cameras, the first thing you need to know is what is your main objective? Yeah. Don't go into it using a Blackmagic camera thinking you're going to be able to get red features. I mean, the features, don't get me wrong, the Ursa Mini is up there with a, uh, and going to compete with a lot of the cameras, but you have to know which, which direction you really want to go in. Um, for instance... I know we're talking about live streaming right now, Black Magic, the Ursa Mini now, you're able to use that in a studio environment. You're able to take that camera and go out and shoot your next film. Or you could integrate it with an ATM switcher, put a viewfinder with it, and suddenly it's a studio camera. So, you know, for, for, for a small business that's really looking to go to the next level, for under 20 grand, you can be able to put a whole package together and really go out there and do business with your clients. Oh, undoubtedly. Yeah. I. I, I hope uh, you didn't think I was dogging the, the Ursa. I absolutely love it. I love that 1080p monitor, too. That thing is gorgeous. Oh, no, not at all. I don't think you're dogging it. I mean, you, you, I know you know what's up. Uh, I mean, I, lo I love I, me some black magic. I, I love it. it. It's heavy, but, you know, I, lo I love that piece of gear, man. It's like, and if, you, if you're into your gear, you just like this. It's, it's just a big camera that you love. I mean, you're not going to lug it around all day long, but it's just a nice piece of heavy gear, you yeah. know. Well, you know, you know, if someone bumps into it, it's not going anywhere. That person will fall down. The <laughs> no, camera won't. No, so I'd like to no. say hi to everybody in, uh, on YouTube and hi to everybody yes, on Facebook. Hi. We've got Owen. We've got uh, Serena. We've got Dave. Dave has the first question. He goes, uh, micro cinema camera into iMac via HDMI. Yes, we're using the Blackmagic HDMI to Thunderbolt. And it also has SDI as well. But it's, it's I mean, it's just plug and forget. You, there's a little piece of software. You tell it whether you're using the HDMI spigot or the uh, SDI spigot. And that's it. Yep. And it's stupid simple. That's what I love about black magic. This stuff just works, you know? So, um, and that's exactly how we're going in. I, you could also use the larger uh, capture boxes. Uh, uh, that You recommended that to me, right, George? You recommended the, the slightly larger multiple input. Right, again, that's um, the, the new um, I.O., which is uh, the Declan Quad 2. That's about a grand, and it's got eight inputs. You could actually put in eight inputs or eight outputs or mix and match. But again... You know, I use that piece of gear for larger events. It's, I, I have it inside of a Sonic Technologies Thunderbolt box. So, you know, again, it depends on your clientele. So I could sit in my, in, my, in my lab and have a conversation with you using that same box. But next week, I might take it out and do a six-camera production. So, you right. know, that's, that's, that's the whole point. You know, don't you, you got to be able to spend wise these days because, you know, gear is going to turn around every couple of months. So let's talk yeah. about gear. That's a very good question. Yes. Nowadays... Okay, well, I, I say this knowing that Black Magic is disrupting the entire environment. Their price points are outrageous for everything. But nowadays, do, do you believe it's important to own a bunch of gear, or do you think you own one rig, and then if you need something outside that, you rent it? How do you feel about that? Oh, I'm a big fan of I own my Max. Um, I would love to get one of those new Titan cars and build a, a really fast wirecast system. Oh, yeah. But I honestly feel, and even now, I own um, two are the micro studio cameras. But a lot of, if I want to, for lensing, I'm going to go out and rent everything that I need. It's, it's almost, unless you have clients that you have to serve every single day and they have specific needs, you know, don't go out and buy a bunch, bunch of expensive gear. Right. Rent it. I mean, there's, there's lens rentals, there's bar lenses, and I'm, I know I'm promoting these guys tonight, but, you know, for the folks that are watching, you know, go out and rent this gear, test it out. If you're even interested in a micro studio camera, you don't have to go drop the 1300 on it. Go ahead and rent it. Test it out. You know, you guys are using one right now. It looks beautiful. I, I absolutely love and adore this camera. We have a red. Um, uh, and 
it, but you know, I'm I'm not super happy with the company the way that they forced us out of you know we we have a red epic and we were told at NAB that we had to fork over a bunch of money or we're no longer in the red program so we now have a camera that can't be upgraded that doesn't make me happy but uh right but this black magic camera it's only thirteen hundred dollars now mind you it's it's completely stripped down it's literally just a camera body but it the the, the sensor quality is disturbingly good and I'm and I'm really kind of scratching my head going this really kind of fights pretty well against my thirty thousand dollar red epic so it's kind of like i like you said i wouldn't uh I, I wouldn't buy expensive gear so do you have like a a stock lens that you have all the time and then you rent other glass do you have like some kind of a zoom lens that you always have in your kit or right but obviously i have the ursa so i have a i have two um i have a 17 or 55 okay. for my big ursa and a, and a 50 mil and another lens for the two uh micro studio cameras i have two um olympus 12 to 40s nice because I could use that 12 to 40 right here in my studio, and that's about four feet yeah. from where I'm sitting. So, you know, it's good for that. So anything beyond that, um, I actually did, just did a job for our clients, and I rented like a, um, I guess, a, a 40 to 150, or a 40 to 300. You know, I'm not going to go into pricing because obviously you do billing and so forth. But, you know, for these productions, you can actually, if you bill it right, you, you'll be able to make a profit. But you don't have to go out and spend all that money on the, on the gear right now. So for, for someone who's just starting out, who, uh, who wants to get into this game in a big market like where you're at, what's a starter kit for you? Just, just I'm a kid. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I need some advice. I've got 12 grand. What would, you build, what would you recommend me to build? Two micro studio cameras. I would definitely go, go with a Mac, but you need to go to a fast computer. Uh, what I would tell folks is Wirecrass is great, but it's only so much you can throw at it. Right, you know, before you start having usage issues, or the uh, the, the version seven is pretty uh, good, but again, you start putting four or five SDI inputs into it, you're gonna have you're gonna have some uh, CPU degradation. So yeah. you just have to be aware of that. But um, monitors, um, computer, you you need a couple of monitors. Um, again, just get the the really basic stuff and go out and rent the rest of the stuff you need. Yeah. You know, get the first two gigs, and as you go. You build on top of that, you know. Black Magic has got a, got some really good pricing, you know. So you know it, that's a good way way to go. Um, for your multi view, I mean Costco. I I have like th three monitors I just acquired from Costco a couple of weeks ago, and you know that's just for my like my multi view and so forth. So there's a whole range of things you can do to really get your business going. I love that, and yeah, you're right uh, about the Wirecast. When we first started talking to you and our buddy Rob Maynard, he was trying to get us to build a machine, and we still may at some point. It was about five grand. It was a PC, and it was much, much more powerful than the iMac that we're using. Um, just that they just uh, at right this second, the uh, the Macs just aren't that powerful. If you're going to start throwing a bunch of things, like you said, if you've got a right. bunch of inputs, we've only got Skype uh, and us essentially, and then we've got a third machine that we can switch to, and we're running we're running at about sixty percent sixty percent load, and uh, you know. If we were to throw the record in or do something else on this machine, we'd probably be in the yellow or the red. So that's yeah. kind of dangerous. Right. So, so you're right. You're going to want something a lot beefier. And I mean, the, the ATM switch is all, always an option. So again, it, it, all, it depends on what you're trying to do. It depends how many inputs you need. Um, right now, I'm just coming over Skype directly to you. Right. Whether I'm using a Logitech 1920 by 1080 camera, go to all, a Sennheiser um, headsets, going into a Mix Pre D. So I'm giving you a uh, really good audio. That's key. Um, if you don't need all the inputs, you know, an ATM switch is the next, the next level to go to to really get, to be able to ease some of the, um, the pressures on your CPU. So if you're, able, if you're willing to put all those inputs into your ATM switcher, you can always use Wirecast as just your encoder. Right. But again, there's so much flexibility inside of Wirecast, like nobody's business. And like you said, everything's upgradable. Like uh, I was talking with Rob, and this little micro studio camera, it literally fits inside the palm of your hand. It is the smallest thing you've ever seen. And so you can get, uh, right underneath it, you can get a, a, a remote rotating head for your tripod. Right. And you could actually, right. You could actually sit there and right. control your shots and then if, do if remote right. focus pulling if you want. There's so many upgrades you can do to get a really pro right. feel. And again, it depends on, for the micro studio camera, I'm a big fan of um, Red Rock Micro, and I've been around those guys for years now. And they have the, um, their one-man one, one director that pretty much goes back and forth. So, you know, if you, if, it depends on the environment you're in and the client you're working with. If you're able to just put one of those down front and cover a whole panel, 
you could just put one of those micro studio cameras on it and have that cover your wide shot. And then, you know, you have two more static cameras. I mean, one of the biggest complaints that I have with my, some of my clients, I'm really helping them to write through right now to work through whether they want to integrate the micro studio cameras or not. The biggest complaint is the cameras being static. But it's, it's easy to overcome that. I mean, there's pan heads in the industry right now, but a pan head is going to cost you 11 grand. We were just in New York, like I said, right. and there was a vendor there you know, displaying a pan head. But that pan head is going to cost you um, about 11 grand. But the Ursa Mini, like I said, with the PL mount version and one of the adapters, you're able to convert that camera to a full-blown studio camera with controls. Again, we're not going to use it in the, in the environment we are streaming in right now but if you have a clientele that really need you need need one camera to be able to push and pull you know that's a good piece to rent and they're readily available for rent right now you know if you can't afford to buy it right i also love the fact that if you if you're going to build a gig bag if you're going to build like a portable system the uh the, the micro studio camera i mean it's so tiny you could i mean in my typical pelican case you could probably put 20 of them in there i mean they're just yep. so small uh, Dave wanted Dave Bosuto asks is an ATM switcher for uh, for cam inputs and then into the iMac. He wants to know if that relieves the computer at all. Does that relieve any pressure on the computer? Oh, definitely. Um, again, it depends on what what clientele I'm working with and the gig I'm on. I'm using an ATM switcher as my main switcher and using the Wirecast Seven as an encoder. So yes, Dave, it does uh, ease the pressure of the CPU if you don't have multiple SDI inputs going into it. Love that. Yep. If anybody has any questions for, for George about anything, uh, we're, I know we're talking about live streaming right now. It just happens to be a subject that we really, <laughs> we're really love into. and we think it's the future. But if you have any questions for George, hit us up in the chat, either on Facebook or YouTube. Got a bunch of people watching. Dave asking you questions. James Schuler, hey, thanks for jumping in. Um, so, so let's switch gears a little bit away from live streaming and talk about the DDC, um, which is your uh, amazing user group in D.C., uh, so the, if anybody doesn't know what that is, that's the District Digital Creatives, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, yep. so, yeah, talk about running that. I mean, it's an amazing group, and you guys do a ton of stuff. So let's, let's hear what you have to say about that one. Well, <laughs> DDC. Um, <laughs> we're District Digital Creatives. Um, we're, one of, we're user group in Washington, D.C. We're just one of the somewhat you know, user groups in, in D.C. There's, there's Tiva, there's WIF. But... Our goal with DDC is to really be able to, f to form a bridge between vendors like yourself and the community. And we're, we're very grateful and lucky that we have two of the major vendors in the country as part of as sponsors for DDC, which is Adobe and Blackmagic. Um, I can't thank them enough to really be on board with us. Um, we try to have monthly meetings. Um, Again, we're going to be doing some live streaming soon, but our main focus is we try to have meetings every month and really bring top-notch talent to the D.C. area. Again, we just had Marcus Laurio from One River Media, and that was really a great piece in the D.C. area for us last month. And um, Before that, we had an awesome uh, panel with um, Robbie Carmen and some really great DPs out of the D.C. area. So the user group, I, I think there's a great benefit for the user group in D.C., um, we have again. We have DDC, and I'm, I have to give a shout out definitely to the guys in Boston, which is Boston uh, Creative Pro user, user Group, Dan, Daniel Barubi, uh, LA. I know we're talking about DC, but I have to give a shout out to those guys because I wouldn't be doing what I do be, uh, if it wasn't for those guys. Uh, Dan, Michael Horton, um, Claudia with the SF Cutters, uh, Atlanta Cutters, um, Walter Biscardi. You know, so I think user groups is essential. I. I live by it. I do a lot of work with it. Um, it's really a mainstay for us to really stay connected to the community. I, I, don't, I don't know how much more I could say about it, but we're really trying to drive, we drive a tight ship, I should say, with a user group. But we're really trying to connect. Our goal is to continue to connect vendors with the use, DC user community. Yeah, I think what you've done for for that area is amazing. I, I always I, we love the user groups. Uh, all those user groups are great that you mentioned. Everyone there, all every single one of them has been really great to us. But uh, when we came to DC for government video, you were very welcoming to us, and uh, you, you gave us the opportunity to present. That was very kind of you. It's a huge group, full of a diverse group of of people, and yeah. uh, it was just it was it was wild. Adobe was there. Jeff Greenberg was there. I mean, you you had a lot of big people there, and uh, it's it. it 
I, I can't wait for you to start live streaming because I think that even people outside of the DC area can really benefit from what's going on in your in that particular group. And, and that's one of my goals, you know, Sean and Steph, is to really go beyond the, the normal meetings that we had. When you guys came to DC, that was that was a lot of work putting that piece together yeah. because we had um I have to give a I know they're probably not watching CPR multimedia, all the projection that you saw on the screen, the audio visual. That was a local company in DC that I worked for that you know jumped in and said, Hey, I said to them, Hey, look, I'm having this event, I run this user group. So it's all about reaching out to the community. Um Sonny Tohan from Mac Business Solutions, you know, so it's a whole we're not only a user group, but we're trying to bring major other players into the into the realm also to help us really have good organization skills and really put together good content when we do. Dave says he wants to know if you're going to IBC. Because if, so, no. if so, he's going to buy you a beer, he said. <laughs> <laughs> no, no IBC this year. You know, I was, I was really honored to go out um, to IBC. Again, we're talking user group. I was really, well, I should say before the user group, you know, my friendship began with a lot of folks in, these, in this industry from going to NAB right. and really doing some other work with uh, Rodney Mitchell, who you guys know, with, um, with his, his user group. Um, the, fr the, the folks from Imagine Products came to me last year and said, hey, George, you know, we, we love what you're doing. Can you come to IBC with us? For, these, for those of you who don't know um, who um, Imagine Products are, they're the folks that make Shotput Pro, mm -hmm. Proxy Mill. Shopper Pro is a big uh, for offloading software, which is which is a very cool version coming out soon here. But you know, those guys took me to, to um, IBC as far as because we are a user group, and you know they loved the work I was doing. So that was pretty cool, as you, you know, to be able to travel to IBC with with um, Imagine Products as George Kennedy and the user group. You know, I can't. So I'm really grateful for the for the love that the industry give us. Yeah, that's great. What we should do is get some love for my agrifer and get Dave on on the. On record, getting us getting us to agree to uh, send all of us to IBC. Let's just get them to send you and, <laughs> and ramp it. Let's just all. I'll wear an iographer T-shirt. I love it. Come on, Dave. Send us. Come on, man. Send us some of that. Me. Some of that iographer love. I mean, Amsterdam is really fun. We've never been. We we keep wanting to go, but uh, it's one of those things where uh, you know uh, NAB is just a few more months away. And back then we were doing booths, and uh, we took all of our money and put it towards the NAB booth. Right. Right. So, um, Dave keeps asking more questions. Ah, where's that? Oh, this. These are, yeah, we're yeah. getting backed up a little. Somehow, uh, every once in a while, Facebook seems to take a little bit of a dive. Um, so, yeah, I love the DDC. It, we'll put links to it in the, uh, the description of these videos. You got to check it out. Even if you're not in the DC area, it's a really amazing group. Really great people. Uh, my buddy Ken Wartendyke's out there. Um, there's all kinds of great people out there. Yeah, the, yeah, Ken. Ken, uh, he was one of our uh, second prize winners for uh, this last meeting. We, um, I, I, because I'm involved with so much with uh, Twitter and Facebook, we try to do really cool things with the user group. This past uh, meeting, we had a tweet wall. Yes. So the person that that really drove the tweet war won DaVinci Resolve and a copy of Fusion Eight. So, um, I, unfortunately, Ken came in second place, and our good friend, uh, David Jaffe from, um. The lookout in DC won that big prize. So you know it's awesome. It's awesome that Black Magic not only supports the, the user group on the front end, but also support us with prizes to really raffle off and you know keep the community going. Yeah, I love. Uh, you've got some really great raffle prizes too. I mean, yeah, people really walking out with some some, some major major. Crazy, so crazy if you stuff. are in DC, you should definitely go check out the DDC. Uh, they are amazing. Uh, check out their Facebook page. Like like Sean said, we'll have all the links and stuff in the description so you can go check them out and uh, see George in action, which is, his group is really cool. So, yeah. Dave, uh, Dave's jumped back in. He's really wanting to go back to live streaming. So we'll ask another question. He goes, um, is there any stress on the iMac when going to YouTube and Facebook at the same time? Yes, absolutely. And technically, according to everyone we've talked to, we shouldn't be able to do what we're doing. Uh, we're barely scraping by. Um, I have to be honest with you. That's absolutely correct. But I'll definitely talk to you and Dave offline. I mean, I kind of shared with you the next route that you probably need to go yeah. with it. So, uh, Dave, I'll definitely get with you off offline. There's some good things in the pipe right now, but it's not. Um, let me give a big shout out to Wowza Media because they're one of our um, big supporters too. Um, for those of you that know don't know Wowza Media Systems, they're a, they're a CDN. Well, they're a CDN now. They they have always been a CDN, but now they have a they have a streaming they have a cloud product and they have a streaming product. The cloud product is for guys like me and you and Steph that want to, you know, pay a monthly fee or pay as you go. 
So definitely you need to check them out online as well as a w w o w z a Um, Wowza allows you to, I could share it with you, Wowza allows you to stream to multiple destinations. So for instance, relieving the stress on your, your computer, you want to stream to one destination and then Wowza takes care of disseminating it all over the world for you. So one of the things that they're going to put in there is Facebook Live at some point for the cloud. It's already in their main system, but for the cloud streaming, they're coming in it very soon. So you want to be able to stream to one destination and have it disseminated to multiple places. You see, uh, for, for everyone out there who's new to uh, live streaming or doesn't understand, that's actually a huge ordeal to broadcast to one and send to multiple and not be responsible for the encoding or the, or the multiple streams. That's huge, and it's worth any kind of money because... Uh, yep. You know, we, you, there are bigger productions out there that are doing this, that are using multiple encoders, multiple streams, multiple machines. I mean, in, in reality, we're pushing this little iMac as far as it can go. And we've got uh, little Mac minis trying to help out. You know, we've got uh, George over there on Skype. He's on a different, he's on a laptop. Uh, we're doing things pretty homegrown. Uh, but in reality, if you really want to be doing multiple streams and have them be reliable and strong, uh, you should be using a service like this or multiple encoders. And, you know, the thing with live stream is it's, it starts with your phone. You can broadcast on Facebook Live or YouTube Live with your phone, and it goes from that point, and it just expands and expands. And the better you want to go, the more expensive it happens to get. So this service is going to be amazing. And the absolute second it's available, I'm buying right away. Definitely. Um, what else can I add? Um, while we're still on live stream again, and I think while I actually had this conversation with creatives with, with um, the guys from Pro Video Coalition, Coalition. So I think it's definitely we need to, as creatives, we need to be looking in a direction. Even if, if we're not going to jump into it, we're going to be creating content for it. So it's definitely um, one place we need to look. So we have another, we have a question here from uh, Paul Watkins. He asked, doing so much tech stuff, how do you keep creativity flowing? Oh, man. Um, I happen to live in D.C. where I really have, I call them my friends, and Linda.com. I mean, there's Robbie Carmen, there's Abba Shapiro, there's Richard Harrington. I'm name dropping, but they're my peeps in the D.C. area. Um, Linda.com. I mean, I, they're a supporter of the user group also. So to, to really keep relevant, you have to be up late at night, man. That's the only way. I mean, I go to bed late, you know. When my family is sleeping at midnight at one in the morning, I'm, sometimes I'm still up at three o'clock in the morning. Sean, I've run into you on Facebook at three o'clock <laughs> in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. Yes, we, so, you know. we have a lot of those 3 a.m. chats. <laughs> um, I don't think it's, it's, it's necessary keeping ahead of your competition. You really got to keep abreast. In our, in our community, you really have to keep abreast of what's going on. And because things are moving so rapidly right now, you know, you have to stay, stay on top. I mean, Linda.com is one way for me to really, and I, I might not necessarily uh, complete the entire course, and Rich is probably going to kill me for saying that, but I might jump in and get what I need out of it and get out and get my job done. Well, that's what Linda's but for, you, though, right? I mean, that's yes, precisely yeah. why Linda does things the way they do. Right. So definitely, Linda.com is a big source for how I stay on top of breast and on the education part. Technology, you have to really get the gear in your hand or... Get online and really harness it. Go to go to conferences, man. I, I mean, I didn't this past week. I didn't have to go to Black Magic uh, Day in New York, but because they're one of my sponsors, I wanted to go up. But it's good to really go and see what's new. Get your hands on the gear. See what work. Talk to other, other folks in the industry. You know, when you go to, when you go to an event and you see a big production company and you have access or just look over their shoulders and see what they're doing. Go stand behind them and see how how things are done. So, you know, that's a, that's a lot of what, what I do also with my time. What I love about your group, though, is it allows, and, and, and I should back this up, what I love about you personally is you, not only are you always learning, you're always on the grind, and you're doing things that are way different than most people, but you're accessible. I mean, I, I really did message you at an odd hour and call you on the phone on the weekend um, to ask you some, some, some questions about problems we were having with Wirecast. And the thing is, with this stuff... There's really, there, as far as I know, there's no Linda course on this stuff. It's all very, right. very much the Wild West right now. Uh, you should right. do a Linda course. I would pay for it in a heartbeat. <laughs> Dave, Dave, has, Dave has a course as well. Uh, it, did, it wasn't out at the time when we were asking these questions. Dave has a, right. has a cool course on Wirecast as well. The, the, the thing is that there's just really no one resource right now. Uh, and, uh, and even, even the, the software resources, that's only one thing. Wirecast is one small part of a much bigger right. picture here. right. Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, again, 
I'm really grateful for the industry I'm, I'm part of, and I'm grateful for I I am in the in the telestream wirecast and the air program. So I had a lot to, to I, I got a chance to input, give input on some of the things that that's probably in wirecast seven. So you know I'm always happy about that. So you know the product is pretty rock solid, but again, you have to know its limitation. Um, if you're willing to build out a major, a big system, I would look at building out a PC. Yeah. I'm seriously thinking about that. Um, I mean, that 1080 from NVIDIA. I mean, oh, yeah. because Wirecast 7 is actually using more GPU right now. So, you know, that's going to be a plus plus. I think that's the way you need to go with some. And again, I hate to keep promoting Black Magic, but they have all the parts that I need to be, to be able to put those IOs into different Thunderbolt boxes. And again, if you're not using, don't, invest in equipment that you could use in your studio and you could use out of the studio. Oh, agreed. Yeah, agreed. agreed. And, agreed. And we're considering doing a home built PC. Uh, I know BH has got some turnkey live stream mm -hmm. stuff. The only problem is they're great on processors, but super light on RAM. And, right. and, the, and the video right. card's not the best. It, it's a good starting point, and it's great because it's, it's portable. It's literally, you know, you can put it in a Pelican case or you can carry it as is. But in, in reality, like you said, you need a lot more procs. You need a really, really sick video card, if not multiple. You need an input card of some kind. So right now, until Apple uh, starts thinking about this as a viable option, right now PCs destroy it. Um, it's, just, it's just how it is. So if we want to take this up at, at all, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's only a PC right now. Yeah, and uh, to answer your quick question, Brent, yes, we are using Wirecast, and that is allowing us to put the lower thirds in and do the switching from screens. A tip that George gave us earlier today was that if you can see that he's a little cropped, which is really cool, so we cropped out the Skype feed from that you used to be able to see us, which was a great tip, which was fantastic. So, yeah. Um, That's I'm, all George. I'm controlling all of that over here, all of the switching and all of that stuff. So it's uh, it, it's it's fun for me. I, I really like it. But uh, yeah, it's all Wirecast. And uh, Dave, we'll put your link for your training in the uh, description when we get the wrap up and all that stuff. So we got gotcha. you. And if uh, it looks like Facebook is having some issues tonight. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so if you're having if you're watching us on Facebook and you're having issues, head on over to YouTube. Go YouTube.com slash Rampant Media. Basically the same, same exact URL uh, as Facebook, and you can watch the stream here. The stream's working flawlessly on YouTube. Once again, it's just, that's the whole live stream thing where you realize that some softwares work better than others, and yeah. uh, who knows what's going on. But let's, let's change the subject a little bit more here. Um, well, but, oh, Sean, before we move on real quick, let me just say for all the editors that, that, that are out there that are watching right now, don't be afraid of this stuff because one of the things that I find as a person that edits – I'm much more efficient when I'm, I'm talking about what I'm engineering for my major clients. I'm much more efficient with switching and timing and, and, and cutting from, especially panel discussions. I'm on fire, man. So for editors that are out there right now and colorists, don't be afraid to dabble into this stuff. I mean, again, I, I focus on freelancers because I know a full-time editor is going to be a full-time editor and a colorist is going to be a colorist. But the guys that are freelancing, it's your world in this industry right now. Yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm completely convinced that live streaming is the future, and I think every single person in our industry should have at least a working knowledge of it, just like people say you should know Premiere, you should know Resolve, you should know After Effects maybe. You really should know at least how live streaming works so you can talk to a client and then recommend a pro, or you can talk to the pro via your client. I'm not saying everyone needs to become a live stream engineer unless that's something you're interested in, but you really should know uh, about it, and it's so – it's. Such, so adjacent to our current industry that it really doesn't take a lot to, to know the basics. It takes a lot to become a master like yourself. We're still dabbling. I feel like we're like, you know, preschool, my first wire stream <laughs> kind of thing, my first live cast. Uh, but we're trying and it's, it's a really interesting environment and seeing how everything works and then wanting to, to grow the hardware and the software and understand how it all works. I mean, when we first started, we were doing Blab, and that was a joke. And now we've got animated titles and split screens and, and you know, an animated background and open and closed music. And um, I mean, just a, just a little short note here. I think it's so important right now. I don't know if you guys saw today that, that Apple actually purchased the rights to carpool karaoke. Yes. Okay, so I guess enough said about that. So it's definitely a great time to be f focusing on I, the web. I think that if you're George Kennedy, you're in a great position. I think if you're listening to this uh, podcast or this video, you are way behind the curve and you need to get going if you want to be involved in web and web broadcast. But at this point, people have got to start taking YouTube and Facebook more seriously. 
there's celebrities, there's all these different people broadcasting. Web is now becoming more common than, than, than actual television broadcasts. So um, it, to the point where Facebook is paying celebrities to abandon their YouTube pages and broadcast solely on Facebook Live. There are companies pouring billions of dollars into this technology, and it's not, if it, is it going to happen, isn't it going to happen like VR or something like that? This is happening right now, and the gear is getting better and cheaper and faster, and the software is way better than it used to be, uh, and it's even on your phone. So we just definitely get into live streaming, at least, at least investigate it just a little bit. So that's my last comment on live streaming. So, <laughs> and, and I keep mentioning my good friends over at Wowza because I'm really... Just like I'm always happy for you guys, I'm happy for this major co major company. So Wowza Media Periscope actually sits on top of Wowza Media Systems. So you guys kind of know that. Yeah. So if, if you know I'm talking about that company, so that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did have, before we move on, we did have one question uh, from uh, Liz in uh, the Facebook group. She says, um, I was watching a live feed on Facebook earlier done on a phone and was able to pause the feed and scroll back, etc. On this feed, I have no interactivity. Is this because we are using, uh, we're not originating in Facebook but outputting to Facebook from another platform? Well, that's a whole nother bag of, um, well, it's called DVR, just like your regular DVR at home. So it depends on what service you're using. Again, you, we're kind of using a free, free services, so they're not going to give you that ability to scroll back and forth. I think Facebook might, might, but again, if you're using, if you live streaming in a different, other different environment with a certain service, they give you a DVR option, which allows you to rewind. Yeah. I know we have that on the YouTube, on YouTube. stream. Yeah. You can put that in your options, but I've never seen that in the options for the Facebook stream. From no, not, not on Facebook, not Facebook. Facebook is kind of well, they're, they're still working it out. Yeah, remember, yeah. They're, they're, Facebook has a big release, a brand new Facebook Live coming this summer where you're going to have a waiting room. You're going to have multiple callers. They want to get rid of Skype. They, they want you to be able to do everything kind of like Blab did where everyone calls into the one room and you can have multiple callers in there. They announced all kinds of stuff that Facebook's potentially going to release within the next month or two. So I think however the software works now, they're just going to let it be and then wait for their big massive update. Right. Yeah. All right. So let's talk, let's talk work-life balance. You're a family man. How do you right. how do you balance? I mean, look, there there are times where I feel like I've accomplished something in my life, and then I look at your feed and see all the stuff you're doing, and realize I am just not coming close. How do you do everything that you do? I mean, look, you're working for new clients every day. You're doing all kinds of stuff. You run a, a user group, and now you've got your family. How do you balance that? How do you make time for for the for the family? I wish I could say it's always balanced. It's not. I just have an uh, amazing wife, an awesome wife. Um, she really takes care of the family, you know, so it allows me to do what I need to do. I mean, freelancing by no means, it's not easy. Owning a small business is not easy. Um, the user group, when I go to a user group meeting, they're there with me. So, you know, they're part, they're part of that. I mean, it depends on the, on the user group meeting. My family is there with me also. I might enlist. My, my cousin Jackie is always there. My wife is always there. My son is in tow. So it's definitely difficult, but my wife understands that, you know, I'm the one that's out there really grinding, so she takes care of the other half, which is making sure everything else is good. So, you know, in that sense, it's really a, it's a grind, man, you know, because you, you're, you're the CEO, you're the, you're the editor, you're the shooter, so, you know, you really got to stay focused, and I, I can't tell you that it's easy. It's not. No, it's not easy. So do you have a support group? Do you have people that you rely on? When You know, I, I think we've all felt in this industry at one time or another, like, this is... This, it wears on you. You know, you've, yeah. you've either got a client who, who treats you wrong, someone who doesn't pay you, someone who steals from you, or, or just whatever. The daily grind just wears on you. Do, you. do you have people in your life? Is it your family? What is it? Who is it or what is it in your life that, that helps you go, okay, I just need to reset and re remember why I'm doing this? Well, I really have some um, – I haven't really stayed in touch with them, but I have some really good folks that I could always call on if I need to. My, uh, the ladies of, um, of uh, First Sunday, they're on Facebook. Um, Janice and Messina. Um, then I have a really good friend, uh, my, my buddy Kurt Matthews. When I really need to vent and use bad words, you know, he, he's, gener he's generally, as a matter of fact, he lives in Orlando too. He's normally the one that I go to. So there's a couple of folks, but you know, sometimes I feel like I really need a mentor because I don't think it doesn't matter how old you are. You, 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 you almost need that one person that you could go to on a regular basis to really have a conversation with outside of your family, outside of your close friends. I agree. I, I bother Jeff Greenberg and uh, Dave Bosuto all the time. 
I, yeah. I think they're going to get restraining orders against me at some point. <laughs> so, so talking about Linda and training, now we live in the greatest time ever where you all the knowledge you need for the most part is out there and most of it's free or you can buy some. What do you feel about going to college or going to film school or for some kind of formal training in our field? Do you feel that you need it or do you feel that you could intern and apprentice your way? What do you, what do you think is, is nowadays if someone was eight, 17 or 18 and trying to figure out, do I go to school? Do I work for somebody? What do I do? How do I get into this field? I mean, I think, oh boy, that's, that's really a tough piece, man. You know, I, I know we're probably going to talk, talk about my service a little bit later on, but I really, I'm happy that I did the four years of college and I have a four-year degree. I don't know, I, that's tough. I don't know if I would have really gone to college. I, I guess if it, were, if it was today, if it was 2015, 2014, I probably would have just, you know, went the Linda route and, re and really learn as I go. I mean, when I came out of college, I went straight to the, working in the AV industry. That's where I do a lot of my work, and I work in the production industry. I work on both sides, so you know I don't know that I really would have went to college if if I was starting out right now. That's a good answer. I I feel the same way. I think with the amount of debt that you could potentially go into with school, um, and this the program you're in may not be that up to date. You never know what you're getting. Like I I can't think of a school off the top of my head right now that's teaching live streaming, for example. You know, right, um, right. Or if they are, it's it's a quick overview on. Hey, I googled live stream, so let's talk about it today. Right. Uh, so. Um, if you if you um, I I think really a college degree right now is only for some folks. Yeah. You know, it depends on the industry you're going into. I think for our industry, you, you can almost you know, it it depends on what you're doing. For editing and colorist, you could pick it up easily, or you could study that that craft. But I think for certain folks, if you really want to become a filmmaker. Like let's say Spielberg, I, I don't know. Even saying Spielberg, you know, there's folks out there are doing really great, great, great stuff, yeah. and they've never gone to college. So you know, I I don't know. That's really a tough one, Sean. Yeah. Well, there's no right answer, George. So you didn't get it wrong. Right. <laughs> right. But yeah, uh, I I personally think if you're gonna spend a hundred grand on college, let's just throw that number out there. You could take that money, put it in a bank account if you have a hundred grand. I and if you have a hundred grand, I want to know you. Uh, but if you have that kind of money, put it in a bank account and then find someone you want to work for and just live off that intern, learn, go on Linda and just hone your own right. skills. You know, right. I think you right. can learn more by working for on the job training than you can in school. But that's, that's because our field is largely a trade, it, right. you know, right. But, uh, it, there'll be a lot of people who tear me, uh, tear me for that one. Uh, we've had a lot of people on this show who say, no, 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 you have to go to film school and that's fine, you know, cause you can get connections, but you're also looking at a considerable amount of debt. Man, I will, t I will say this. I mean, Having a four-year degree and going to school for four, for um for that four years, I mean, I feel like almost the the, the single most thing I learned in, in college is my, when my professor uh, Rocky Jones said, you know, if there's one thing you could do in this industry is be on time. You know, I'll never forget <laughs> yeah. that. It's like be on time. But I mean, going to college is also a certain discipline. I mean, you you kind of this. I think it's it's worth it. But again, if it's not the route you want to go, I mean, I wouldn't. If you know you're gonna, I, I guess if you know you're gonna waste your time. Don't go. If you know you can pick it up from Linda, whatever the case may be, you know, I would say skip college. Right. I guess the only real truth in, in this is that we're not doctors and lawyers, so you don't have to go to school right. to do what we do. Right. Right. Um, well, I was just going to say, like, I agree with Dave. Dave said that uh, going, if you go to college, go learn business, learn business techniques. Yeah. And uh, Serena, Serena just said the same thing. Yeah. So then, then go pick up the, you know, the trade stuff afterwards, learn the stuff that you can't really get, you know, from other people and learn the, learn that stuff. So yeah, we definitely agree, Serena and Dave. Uh, that's great. Those are great comments and great points to make. So business, it's good to have business. So let's take it back. Let's take it back to 21 year old George. What <laughs> advice would you give to yourself 20 at 21? Man, I don't know. 21, I was in the Navy. So, you know, I don't know. A little bit of backstory, you know, I, I, was, I was born in the Caribbean. You guys know that. So I came to the U.S. when I was 14. You know, my mom's and pops was already here. So once I came here, I went to high school. And after high school, I mean, there was no really, before high school was over, there was no real plan. And I knew that my mom's and pops probably wouldn't have the money to send me to college. So, you know, by then you always had recruiters in your schools courting, you know, hey, go to the Navy. So, you know, that was an option for me. But, again, I knew I wanted to go into the Navy, and within four years, I'm out. 
the day I came out of the, I came out of the Navy in August, I was going to UDC in September. So I knew I wanted to go in just to get that money for school and come back and go out. So the Georgia 21 made made the decision before that to go to the Navy. So I'm, I don't regret it. Um, I wouldn't go now. Again, it's just like college. I wouldn't sign up to enlist and go to the Navy now because there's so many op more opportunities, I think, if you're disciplined now. But Georgia 21 is pretty much happy <laughs> with this decision of going to the Navy. No, there's nothing wrong with that. If that makes sense. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that at all. Did you, when you were in the yeah. Navy, did you know you wanted to get into video or did you, did you find your way into video after that? Or what did, how, when, did, when, was the, when did it click with you saying, this is what I want to do? I want to be a video engineer. I mean, obviously my degree is in television production. So again, I think they're all they all in, intermingle because you know, and in, in 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 college you have to know to it's television production, so you kind of get a uh, exposure to switching and so forth. Mm -hmm. I think in the navy I always knew that I love media, so you know it was easy for me when I got to college to declare my um what I wanted to do for that four years. So, and again when I got out of college, you know my friend, there's a couple of my friends that were already in the in the AV industry, and they say, hey man, you know. It's all about getting the next gig. I mean, going to work for CNN or other broadcasting company, you you quickly find out that it doesn't pay great. So you know, I, I was exposed to the AV industry, and I spent. I still work in the AV industry now. You know, as an engineer, it depends on any given day. I'm doing something different, and you know, that's no lie. I might be a graphics up one day. I might be a video engineer. So our industry is all about preparing yourself for that. That's why I say to folks now, you know. For what we do as creatives, and I, I have to give prop, big props to Adobe with the Creative Cloud. It really gives you great exposure to multiple things. I mean, I'm even designing websites now. I mean, not major paid clients, but the DDC website, that's designed by me. So, you know, <coughs> excuse me. So, it allows you to really spread your wings, you know. I love that. I love that. You know, that's the one thing I love about your gig is... Uh, if, if someone says, you know, it'd be harder for things to get stale when you're doing a different job every single time. And of course, obviously, every single live gig comes with its own unique set of, uh, of issues. Like you and I have talked offline. Some people want your gear. Some people just want you as an op, you know. So every, right. every gig is completely different. And like you said, you're, sometimes you run graphics. Sometimes you're doing the switching. Sometimes you're a TD. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. Um, if anyone else has any questions, we've, we've taken a lot of George's time up. Uh, I'm going to put all the links for George uh, up on these feeds when they go live uh, after they've done encoded, encoding. Um, Man, it's an hour already? Yeah. yeah. See, I told you. <laughs> I told you. It goes by <laughs> quick. It goes by quick. You think, well, this will only be 20 minutes or whatever, and people ask good questions. And uh, we can't thank you enough for being on the show, George. You're an amazing yes, human being. Thank you so and, much. Uh, I think I think people should all take note of what George is doing as a, a, as a live stream. I, I don't want to call it an op, a live stream engineer. I think it's really great that you're way way ahead of the curve on this. When a, not a lot, a lot of people are talking about it, we get a lot of flack for doing it. A lot of people are like, as a small business, why on earth would you want to do live streaming? And I think it's critical. But hey, look, um, let me let me just share this with you. It's it's, it's gratifying when I mean. I don't. You guys don't know Marcus Solorio. He's, he's, he's a good friend of mine, industry friend. When he came down to DC present, I mean, we, we had I had the ATM switch out. I ran converters to the to the podium. We had a whole full blown switch set up. I mean, there's only two presenters, but I know his comment was, "Man, these guys are you know, it, it's." I don't think he used the word anal, but it's it's in a good way. I mean, you have to be able to. We live in a in. For what we do now, you have to be able to step up to the plate. Yeah. What you guys are doing, it's, it's part of, it, it needs to become part of your business. You, like I said to you offline, you have a great product already. This is just an extension of it now. You know? And I, I said it to you not, not only now, but last December. This is all an extension. I mean, so I wouldn't worry about what people have to say. I mean, you, you have to do you, you know. Um, it's the direction we're going in. Your creatives, I mean, the content that you're putting out right now, it's being used, whether it's for big ballroom productions, it's used, using on films. So you have to find you have to find those other niches that you're not hitting right now, or you have to maintain those niches that you have right now. Right. I mean, if that makes sense. I mean, I'm kind of sharing st stuff with you, but it, it makes sense for what you're doing right now, and I share that with you. I, I think it. I think regardless if if you're if you have any kind of business of any kind, I think you need to find a way to interact live with your audience. I think that's yeah. just where we're headed. And I think, right. I think as, a, as an editor or video producer or a video engineer like yourself, I think it's critical that you know this technology. And I love the fact that you're so far ahead of so many other people. 
we, I'm in constant discussions on Facebook and all these forums where people are saying, well, live streams just going it, to, it's just not a thing. And that's just them projecting their own thoughts or, 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 or hatred for the, for the content. It doesn't matter. This is how it is. And there's more and more broadcast right. every day. But I, I know we, I know we're probably going to go past our, our hour, but it's, it's all good. Um, Apple TV. I mean, obviously, I'm a, I'm a Mac geek, so I'm a, I, I could only speak for Apple TVs. I mean, look at look at all the content. I mean, I'm just blown away, and that's only going to grow. So, as creatives, we're creating content on the back end, but we're you know, are we are we just going to continue to pass that that content off to clients and we don't know where it's going? I mean, in the in the AV industry, I work with editors and audiovisual companies. So there's sometimes there's such a big disconnect between the AV companies and the video production company that's bringing in the content. And the, the sizing for the video might be wrong or mm -hmm. the graphics might be wrong. So, you know, for me, it's a benefit to know Adobe. Um, to, to, obviously, I know Premiere. So for clients that in the AV industry that might come to me and say, hey, George, um, I need you for six days as an editor. You know, that's a benefit for me. I might not get a, edit, a major edit job every single day, but that's a niche that I'm going after also is editing for my AV clients because their word is colliding with clients saying, hey, we need a live stream. We need you to live stream this. Hey, we need you to create this video for us on site. So, you know, again, there's different, it, it all depends on how you look at it. Yeah. You're just adding more value to your client. There's really nothing wrong with that. Right. Right. And then you're just more money in your pocket. So, you know, right. I mean, I, right. I don't see a negative to this. but uh, So if anyone doesn't have any other uh, questions for George, we'd like to thank you for being on the show, my friend. Yes, it's an honor to you know so you. Much. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. for. You've always been really great to us. Thank you so much for doing this. And uh, we'll put all the details up to get to find out more about George on the, on the description. And uh, you can watch this show every th Tuesday and Thursday at 9 p.m., right? Yep, 9 p.m. Eastern. And, um, uh, and what you go to rampantlive.com to catch all the previous episodes, or you can see it on YouTube and Facebook. And so iTunes thanks again. and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It's, it goes to <laughs> iTunes and Stitcher. It goes everywhere. So if you can't find the show, I don't know how to help you, really. <laughs> short, of, short of showing up at your house with a thumb drive and playing it on a laptop for you, I, I think we've got you covered. But yeah. thanks. And, you, and, and if you're trying to find me, GKJR, you can find me everywhere. I'm on Facebook. I, I, I don't know if you guys saw today. I just dropped a, a Facebook page, yeah. GKJR. Because, again, I, I, I mean, you, you're my friends on Facebook, too. I, kind of, I feel like I've been killing my family with my tech, techie posts. So, you know, I'm going to move <laughs> all that stuff over there. But um, You're a nicer guy than I am because my family can just deal with it. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, I appreciate you guys having me on and um, continued success with what you're doing. Oh, oh likewise. It's an honor to know you. And thank yes. you so much for everything you've done for us again. We would not have this show if it wasn't for George. So thank you very That's much, true. George. And uh, we'll catch you guys later. Go to rampitlive.com. And uh, uh, I guess we'll see you on Thursday at 9 p.m. Thursday at 9 p.m. Bye. All right, Thanks, guys. George. See you. All right.